welcome back, guys. Uh, today it's uh, we're talking about the drug calcium gluconate, and um, I, I call it the uh, the calcium chloride's prettier sister. And it is a prettier sister in an emergency medical service system. We definitely probably want to use this guy a lot more than we would want to use calcium chloride. The biggest thing is, is you can give this one peripherally, and it usually does a little bit better as far as the the, the tissue. Remember that calcium chloride should be given through a central line, if at all possible. But yeah, what do we usually do in EMS? We give it through a peripheral line. So again, same kind of rules apply with it, though. we got to get it a good flush with it. And so it's used for the maintenance of nervous and muscular skeletal tissue cell membrane. Um, and it's a calcium salt. That's the class of drug it is. It is an essential element. So what we use it for is hydrofluoric acid toxicity, or, or products that contain calcium fluoride. And it's uh, necessary for uh, the transmission of nurse impulses, so we also use it there. Uh, the other thing that I will tell you that we use it for is um, is for if they've overdosed on magnesium sulfate. Okay, so if we've given them mag sulfate, uh, this is our drug that's our, our counter agent for it. Uh, the IV, again, is, uh, it, it improves vascular tone, myocardial contractility if you've got a low uh, levels of calcium again we got to know what the levels of calcium are and then the cardiac output in the blood pressure will increase usually so by the way that's kind of the old reason why they used to give this a cardiac arrest all the time because the thought was as well it'll make everything better uh, we found out that, that wasn't necessarily true now uh, again onset of action is usually 15 to 60 minutes so it takes a little time for this stuff to kick in and then the duration of action again four to six hours okay you're probably going to see those in the near future uh, we use it for hydrofluoric acid burn. So if you get that, this or if we have a mag sulfate overdose, that's the other reason with that's our big one. Uh, and last but not least is if you get a black widow spider bite, this helps relieve the muscle spasms. Okay, so uh, again, uh, we usually will give this, and we usually call the doc to get an order for that. By the way, um, all three of those usually is that maybe the hydrofluoric acid. Uh, you can do that. Now the problem is that we don't carry this on the truck, and I don't know why. Just like I said. It's a, it's a safer alternative to calcium chloride, okay? Um, what we will do, though, is if you give this drug, it's going to give you hot flashes. It's going to get you this feeling of heat waves, okay? You can get a chalky taste in the mouth. You can get nausea vomiting with it. Uh, it will slow down the heart rate just a little bit. It can cause vasodilation. It can cause them to pass out. Give too much, it can cause cardiac arrest, okay? Yeah, remember, too much of a good thing is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, again, the sensation of the heat wave is kind of the big one that you, you kind of hear. Now, um, again, the, the, if you don't have a hydrofluoric acid burn or a magnesium sulfate overdose or a black widow spider bite, a uh, low level of calcium, uh, you should not be given this drug. Okay, so it's pretty specific on what you can give it to. Uh, again, the relative is digital toxicity or hypercalcemia. Kind of makes sense. We don't want to give a drug that's going to throw those things off. And if they're in V-fib, stay away from it. Uh, really, it doesn't help or anything. So again, it uh, uh, it does help the oral absorption of atenolol, bio, uh, your aldosterone, or restorates, uh, or uh, tetracyclines, any type of antibiotic. It actually can throw those off, okay? Um, uh, it, it's going to decrease the tetracycline effects, by the way. Uh, it potentiates digitalis and calcium toxicities and don't administer with cefotrexone, which is, again, an antibiotic. So if they're on antibiotics, this is a good drug to stay away from, okay? Uh, if they're on uh, protein, uh, pri the uh, parazole, again, it may reduce the calcium absorption. One of the biggest problems with moparazole is that they can uh, break bones easy. So uh, so be careful with those protein pups inhibitors. Uh, thiazide diuretics, it could cause calcium toxicity and hypercalcemia. Again, because you're messing with the ions and the salts, usually sodium, potassium, with the thiazide diuretics, okay? This is your HCTZ drugs, by the way. Uh, it can reverse the clinical effects of toxicities of verapamil. Well, again, so it's an antidote if you overdose them on a calcium channel blocker, all right? Uh, we don't give this sub-Q or IM unless you prefer to have dead tissue, and it will sloth off. So, yeah, uh, we want to make sure that it is in a vein, it is in a well fluid flowing vein where we have tested it and we have no chance at all of infiltration of it and it can induce serious cardiac dysrhythmias give it slow matter of fact i usually give it in a bag over 
10 to 20 minutes, actually, if I do end up giving it. Uh, again, 10 to 50 milliliter vials is what it comes in. And um, so the way that you do this is if you get a burn, if you get burns to the eyes, you're going to mix it in normal saline and then flush it with a set of Morgan lenses. The Morgan lenses are kind of like contacts where they can attach to the fluid and the fluid just kind of flows over the eye. The uh, calcium, uh, if they burn the skin, we usually put the medicine into a KY packet. We mix it up really good, and then uh, we administer it to the, the burned area, and then we cover with a sterile dressing, and it will help relieve the pain there. It'll neutralize the hydrofluoric acid. Uh, if you inhale it, yeah, guess what? We can nebulize it, okay? So we usually take that one milliliter, we mix it with three milliliters of normal saline, Put it in the nebulizer, let them administer it one to two grams slow over five minutes. Uh, for, that's for the severe exposures. We'll give it, um, again, I usually put it in a, uh, the one gram in, a, in probably a hundred bag and just let it run in nice and slow. Um, again, uh, if you're going to give it IV, uh, again, slow IV push, uh, it's better. I'm telling you, put it in a bag, let it run in. Okay. Uh, you can do it the old uh, very little push method. Uh, okay. Uh, for kids, again, don't use it. Uh, well, you should not use it. I I would feel okay actually on probably a if it was a simple hydrofluoric burn, but hopefully they're not getting into hydrofluoric acid anywhere. Again, uh, your routes are going to be IV and IO. Uh, you can put it on the dermis. Remember, don't give it IM or sub Q. That's going to cause bad stuff to happen. And then a pregnancy is again a class C. Uh, probably stay away unless. Unless uh, that you've overdosed them on mag sulfate, then this is make sure that if you're doing a transfer with these guys and you're giving them a mag sulfate drip, make sure you take some calcium gluconate with you. Merely ask the nurse and they can dispense it. It's not a big deal. I've done it all the time. All right. So make sure that you got those things um, with, with the uh, with calcium gluconate and we'll see you guys on the next one.